Hi everybody, in this hopefully really short video we're going to cover uh, one of our favorite kinds of questions and that is a question that deals with predicting the signs of thermodynamic functions. On this slide I've got two examples of a couple of different kinds of reactions and what we're going to be able to do is we're going to be able to use our chemistry intuition, if that's possible, to predict the sign, positive or negative, of the three different thermodynamic functions that we now know something about. All right, you knew about delta H from last year, and over the course of this unit, we've taught you a little bit about delta S, change in entropy, and delta G, the change in free energy. So let's see if we can figure out what the signs will be for the three thermodynamic functions for these two examples. First, splitting of water to gaseous oxygen and hydrogen. Now, I'm going to leave it to you to try to write the balanced reaction for H2O gas turning into oxygen gas and hydrogen gas. But when you do that, one of the first things you should notice is that there are more gas moles on the product side than there are on the reactant side. And as we discussed in a previous video, that tells you that the change in the entropy is going to be positive. I'm just going to change the line width on my marker here so we can see this a little bit better. There we go. So positive, okay, for the delta S. What about the delta H? Well, to split water into oxygen and hydrogen gas, you're going to have to break some bonds. There's going to be a net bond-breaking process there. So that tells us that there's going to have to be energy going into the system because it's essentially a decomposition reaction. So the delta H is also going to be positive. So then where does that leave delta G? Well, if you remember from a previous video, we talked about the different sign combinations between H and S, and sometimes they lead to a specific value for G or specific sign for G. Well, here we have a positive H and a positive S. That doesn't determine overtly what the sign of delta G has to be, but this is where you're going to rely on what you know to be true. Do we live in a world in which under standard state conditions, and that's what the little superscript zero here means. It means we're talking about 1 atm and 25 degrees for our conditions, all things uh, being equal. Those are the conditions we're talking about. Do we live in a world in which water at 1 atm and 25 degrees, essentially the conditions you're probably at or darn close to them right about now, does water spontaneously split into hydrogen and oxygen gas? No, it doesn't. And actually, that would be a good thing, because otherwise the world would be a completely different place if it did do that. So the conditions, standard state conditions, water doesn't do this, and so that must tell us it's non-spontaneous, so the delta G is also positive. Let's take a look at the second reaction, the combustion of octane in the engine of a car. Again, I'm going to leave it to you to write the balanced reaction for octane plus oxygen to make carbon dioxide and water. And again, what you'll see is that there will be more product moles of gas than there are reactant moles of gas. So the delta S here is going to be positive. It's a combustion reaction. What do you know to be true about combustion reactions? Are they exothermic or endothermic? They're exothermic. So the delta H here is going to be negative. So if I have a negative delta H and a positive delta S, does that predetermine for me, does that set the sign of delta G to be something? It sure does. The delta G has to be negative. And that makes sense because this is how we all get to school in the morning, right? There's a combustion reaction of gas in the vehicle that we're traveling in to get to school that combustion reaction has to liberate free energy so that the car will move. So it makes perfect sense that the delta G there for that process is going to be negative. So this is the kind of question that Dr. Kim and I really like to ask because they're not too hard to write, they require you guys to think a little bit, and um, they're fairly easy to grade. All we have to grade are positive and minus signs. So these are actually kind of ideal questions, we think. All right. Good enough for now. We'll come back to more predicting sign uh, questions later on in future slams and quizzes and stuff like that.